being non-binary is like going back to who I am culturally, which is we don't buy into the whole boy, girl, he, she. In my culture and my language, there is no he or she kind of pronouns. There's only they or this person or that person and that's how you always refer to people. Like for me, I knew that I wanted to use they pronouns in English because I knew that I felt most comfortable in Mandarin where ta is the pronoun for everyone. But there's no ta in English and I had to pick one and so it wasn't they. Our Thai version of queer identity, we call it as the third gender, an umbrella term for queer identities or any queer genders and I feel like I kind of fit into this. So to me being gay and Asian, it means that there is a lot of conflict between those two communities and it's hard to keep defending one community when you belong to the other. On the flip side, it also means that you get to be a part of both of those communities, which is great. <laughs> People who are queer or gay are generally more accepting. There is still a lot of discrimination and that usually relates to race. So there is still that hierarchy of who is desirable and who is not, who is worth another look or not. I think about my culture, it's hard because we went through a lot of colonialism like four countries, basically there are four countries like took the Philippines and we took a little bit of culture and expectations of what it means to be a woman or a man from all those different cultures. They kind of said, well, women do this, men do that. I guess we don't really know what we were before. For me, being queer and Thai at the same time, it means like I'm living in the two worlds. It seems to me that it doesn't relate to each other. Being Thai means like you I'm concerning my family's obligations and protecting my family's faces. Meanwhile, being queer can mean like I don't conform to any social rules or norms when I'm in love with someone. In, in China, I can't still not tell my parents. My mom is quite open-minded but she can't she still not accept this kind of thing. It's for most of us who are migrants especially, there's a lot of parental mourning a lot of the time, no matter how comfortable they are with what they might consider Western values. Your being queer is a sign that you're not as Asian as we hoped you were. Coming to a country like New Zealand as an Asian person, as an Asian parent who wants the best for their kids, you hope that you, they will have a better life and a broader life. But on a lot of levels, you also hope that they won't grow up to be people who are alien to you. And that does hurt for a lot of Asian parents, seeing their kids grow up in such a way that they don't really recognize them anymore as part of this ethnic identity that's so important to them. Yeah, one of the hardest things about being gay and Asian is uh, the role of expectations and that does give a bit of a burden. Actually a lot of cultures don't have a concept of gender or sexuality which means they don't have a sense of transphobia or homophobia or at least until they were colonized. Oh no, it's so brave of you to fight your homophobic Asian family. And it's like, yeah, okay, that's that's definitely something that a lot of us have to deal with. But it's really, really rude getting that stuff from white people who sort of think that white people as a whole are better about homophobia than Asian people. You know who brought homophobia to Asia? Christian missionaries. And now you're coming here and being like, oh, I'm so sorry that you guys are so backward. <laughs> that's, that's really offensive and I really hate when that happens. Stop thinking that you are lesser than people who are white because color is great <laughs> and that's it stay strong everything will fall in place <laughs> i think we would all be better off if we were a bit more patient with each other when we meet new people when we try and find out what people are about